I think it's safe to say that we're all pretty big fans of the movie Fight Club. Not only was it an iconic film, which is still spoken about today, but it inspired all different types of genres of media. But did you know that the original book was released in 1996 and it was a huge bestseller? The book was so iconic that only three years later in 1999 was the movie released. Today, we are going to dive into the main differences between the novel and the film and explore some of the main themes in both. Fight Club the Novel was published by Chuck Palahniuk in 1996. The novel was later adapted into a film released in 1999, directed by David Fincher and starring Brad Pitt and Edward Norton. There are several key differences between the Fight Club book and movie. One of the most significant differences is that the movie is told from the perspective of an unnamed narrator, while the movie is narrated by the character played by Edward Norton. This change of perspective affects the way that the story is told and the way the characters are presented. It's not clear exactly how Chuck Palahniuk, the author of Fight Club, came up with the idea for the novel. Palahniuk has said that he was inspired by his experiences working as a volunteer at a hospice and by his observations of the men's rights movement, which he saw as being focused on men's anger and resentment rather than genuine social issues. In an interview with the New York Times, Polonik said that he was also influenced by his own feelings of anger and frustration, which he channeled into the character of Tyler Durden, the charismatic and violent leader of the Fight Club in the book. Polonik has says that he wrote the book as a way of dealing with his own emotions and as a commentary on modern society and the ways in which people cope with their feelings and powerlessness and isolation. Overall, it seems that Polonik approached the idea for Fight Club as a way of exploring and expressing his own emotions and observations about society, and as a means of challenging readers to think about the ways in which they cope with their own feelings of anger and frustration. In addition to its success as a novel, Fight Club has also had a lasting impact on popular culture. The novel was adapted into a film, which as I said was released in 1999 and directed by David Fincher, which further increased the book's popularity and cultural influence. One of the biggest differences between the book and the movie is the ending. Spoiler alert for anyone who has not seen this movie yet or wants to read the book, but in the book, the narrator's alternate personality, Tyler Durden, is revealed to be a manifestation of his own psyche and the narrator is able to integrate Tyler's traits into his own personality. That's a mouthful, but let me explain a little bit further. Additionally, the entire plan to destroy the city is unaccomplished as there were problems with the explosives and no chaos was caused. And despite the narrator's attempt to rid himself of Tyler, Tyler and Fight Club's anarchist followers who are hidden around the city still show their unwavering support. In the movie, however, Tyler is a separate entity who is ultimately killed by the narrator, leading to a more violent and climactic ending, along with their anti-capitalist plan being successful and the city skyscrapers crumbling to the ground. Other differences between the book and the movie include the ways in which the characters are portrayed, the inclusion of additional subplots and characters in the movie, and changes to the dialogue and overall tone of the story. While both the book and movie versions of Fight Club are based on the same story, they differ in significant ways and offer distinct storytelling experiences. Some of the main themes in the book are as follows. Masculinity. The novel explores the expectations and stereotypes surrounding masculinity and the ways in which men cope with feelings of powerlessness and inadequacy. The Fight Club serves as an outlet for men to express their anger and frustration and to challenge the traditional notions of masculinity. Consumerism. The book critiques the materialism and consumer culture of modern society and the ways in which people use consumerism as a means of coping with their feelings of emptiness and disconnection. Search for meaning. The narrator is seeking a sense of purpose and meaning in his life, and the book explores the ways in which people try to find meaning in their lives and the challenges they face in doing so. And the last but definitely a huge aspect of this book is mental health. The novel delves into the narrator's struggle with mental health and his efforts to come to terms with his own issues. One possible hidden meaning in Fight Club is the exploration of masculinity, which I just spoke about. The Fight Club serves as an outlet for men to express their anger and frustration and to challenge traditional notions of masculinity. The book and film critique the expectations and stereotypes surrounding masculinity and suggest that men are often trapped by societal expectations of what it means to be a man. I think a Fight Club is the perfect representation for this critique as fighting is characteristically a masculine trait, but also getting beat up is masculine in its own right. 
The point of Fight Club isn't always to win the fight. No one is betting on what's going on, and you don't gain anything from the fight other than simply experiencing it. It's the experience of being in a fight, the sensation of getting hit in the face and giving one back. Society expects men to stand up and fight back, even if there is a chance of them losing. So there is something cathartic and masculine about simply showing up, even if it means getting your ass kicked. Another possible hidden meaning in Fight Club is the critique of capitalism and the ways in which we monetarily value our memories and relationships, ultimately leading to feelings of loneliness, disconnection, and despair. The film and book explore the materialism and consumerism of modern society and suggest that people are often trapped by their own desire for possessions and status. This is a theme often portrayed in Polonik's other books as well, doing a deep dive into our relationships with quote-unquote things and how humans even materialize memories and experiences. In another one of Chuck's books, Choke, this is played out in an even more dramatic way. The story centers around the protagonist, Victor, who pretends to choke on food in fancy restaurants so that someone will save his life and forever feel connected to him thus subsequently sending him money on birthdays and holidays because they now consider him a part of their life. Victor uses people's attachment to this story or the feelings of being a hero to manipulate and con them into sending him these gifts. But what makes the movie Fight Club so good is how these elements that are also apparent in Chuck's other novels were able to be portrayed on screen and by using the medium of film. The director, David Fincher, was able to present these concepts in a new and a unique way. Another difference between the book and the movie are their portrayals of Tyler. Although the movie does a great job showing who Tyler really is, and the eventual reveal that Tyler doesn't actually exist, there are some slight differences between the two. In the novel and movie, Tyler Durden, played by Brad Pitt, is the charismatic and violent leader of an underground fight club, which serves as an outlet for men to vent their anger and frustration. The character is revealed to be a manifestation of the narrator's alternate personality, and the two characters are ultimately revealed to be the same person. In the book, we get more experiences with Tyler learning exactly how deep his beliefs go in terms of anarchy, and we have a lot of scenes of Tyler splicing nude images into films at the theater that he works at. Additionally, the twist of Tyler's non-existent nature is much more intense in the book, since the novel really breaks down Tyler's thoughts and conversations with the narrator, causing a much more dramatic reveal than in the movie. Yes, the movie had a huge twist with Tyler's reveal, but since it's only a two-hour movie, David Fincher could only include so much of the original story. So, the book has a much longer explanation of his final grand plan, aka Project Mayhem. The book shows the narrator realizing who Tyler is while he's trying to sleep, recognizing that he does in fact have insomnia, but rather than laying awake sleepless at night, he becomes Tyler. He also realizes that his love interest, Marla, is totally fabricated in a way, with Marla only knowing the narrator by the name Tyler Durden. This realization is followed by noticing that suddenly everyone is calling him Sir and recognizing him, something that was always a trait associated with Tyler. As the story comes to an end, the narrator realizes everyone knows him as Tyler, and the group of Tyler's followers, referred to in the book as Space Monkeys, are only loyal to him. Now, there are also a number of Easter eggs hidden in the film adaptation of Fight Club which relate to the novel, as well as things outside of the film. Let's do a quick run through of some of these super cool Easter eggs. The first thing we noticed is the character of Tyler Durden is seen wearing a t-shirt with the word single written on it. This is a reference to the 1996 film Sling Blade in which Brad Pitt played the character of Billy Bob, who also wore a t-shirt with the word single written on it. Next, the character of Bob, played by Meatloaf, is seen wearing a t-shirt with the logo of the band Kiss on it. This is a reference to the fact that Meatloaf appeared in the Kiss film, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park, which was released in 1978, and of course, Meatloaf being a popular musician. We also noticed the film includes a number of references to other work directed by David Fincher, including the film Seven and The Game. For example, the police detective played by Zach Greener in Fight Club also appears in Seven, and the character of Tyler Durden mentions the company Consumer Recreation Services, which is also a company that appears in the game. Finally, the film includes a number of references to the novel of which it's based, including visual references to the cover art of the novel and dialogue that directly quotes lines from the book. 
The scene where we meet Big Bob is almost identical in the movie and in the book. So, why do people love Fight Club? There's a number of reasons why people love Fight Club, the novel, and the film. One reason that people might love Fight Club is due to the unconventional narrative style and complex themes. The novel is told from the perspective of an unreliable narrator and employs a nonlinear structure, which keeps readers engaged and adds to the overall sense of mystery and uncertainty. Additionally, the book explores a range of themes which might resonate with readers and encourage them to think about these issues in a new way. Another reason people might love Fight Club is due to the sharp and incisive commentary of modern society. The book critiques the materialism and consumer culture of contemporary society and the impact it has on our deeper psyche and overall aspirations in life. This commentary might appeal to readers who share similar views or who are interested in social and cultural issues. And finally, Fight Club has become a cultural touchstone, and many people might be drawn to the book or film due to its popularity and the associated sense of community that comes with being a fan. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. If you love Fight Club, leave a comment of your favorite quote or part of the film, and if you wanna see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and give a like. See you in the next video.